Oh, okay guys, let's go ahead and do this video. Uh, it wasn't the video I had planned, but I'm officially throwing in the towel. I'm not going to be reviewing Arctic Linux, at least right now. I I'm fed up. I can't do it anymore. I, I just can't. It's This is me rage quitting Ar Arctic Linux. And I, I have a long and complicated story to tell you, so buckle in, subscribe, hit the like button, all that nonsense. Let's just get going. So... A couple of weeks ago, on the community tab, I put up a poll asking what my next long-term review should be. And the winner was Arctic Linux by a good 20 points. The one that came in second place was OpenSUSE, which was the one that I was hoping would win, but sometimes polls don't go the way you want them to go. It's fine. I was a man, and I walked past it. It was good, and you know I was just going to do it. It was going to be fine. It was going to be an experience, an adventure, because... Frankly, I've never had a good experience with something that doesn't use Systemd. I tried Void Linux ages ago, and anybody who's been following the channel knows that I tried like five times, and I just could not get it to install. So, I wasn't really expecting all that much from Arctix, but I was expecting it to be, you know, fine. It's basically just Arch Linux, but they've ripped Systemd out of it, and they've put some other init system in. So, I was expecting it just to be, you know, Arch Linux. The first thing I did was install it in a VM, and I thought it was going to be overly complicated because every you know it being an Arch Linux clone, basically, I figured I'd have to actually install it like Arch Linux, but there are several ISOs that they have that offer graphical installers, and that's one of them that I chose. I was like, you know what, I'm going to be lazy about this at least the first time, and I installed it via Calamari's installer, and it came up with XFC, and it was fine in a VM. It worked perfectly okay. It was, you know, it was Arch Linux. It's, it has a really weird system for package management. Like, it uses Pac-Man, but it doesn't use the standard pacman.com. So, you don't get the standard Arch repos. You get their repos that don't have very, many, very much software in them. It's really weird. But, whatever. You can enable the Arch Linux repos through a package and a, a alteration of pacman.com, which I eventually figured out. So... Once I messed around with it in the VM for a little while, I figured, well, you know, it's time to install this on hardware. Now, normally, with these long-term reviews, I've only really done one, normally I install it on the stand desk behind me, on the laptop. And I use it back there for a little while. But this time, I didn't want to do that simply because I wanted to get this long-term review done a little bit faster than the month I spent with Debian. I wanted to spend two weeks with it. So I decided to install it on one of the hard drives I have in my main system. And the first time I tried installing it, it was a success. I installed the XFCE version uh, through the, the graphical installer. I just decided to be lazy about it again. And, you know, whatever. I know that's not the true experience of Arctic Linux and the purists out there are going to, you know, bitch at me, but I don't care. Uh, I just wanted to get it done. I wanted to use it. I didn't want to have to go through and follow the guide or do whatever. So I got installed. It worked fine. I went through and actually installed DWM got it my rice installed everything and then I did a system update and as is usual on every single system that uses light DM after an update the first update and a reboot it just gives me a blank screen like a blank screen like with a, a blinking cursor up in the upper left hand corner and that's not an Arctic Linux problem that happens on every single distribution whether it's Ubuntu based Arch based whatever that uses light DM it just happens it does not like this computer and it's stupid. But normally, when that happens, I can get into a TTY, uninstall LightDM, install like SDDM, which I know works all the time, and I'm fine. I can just carry on with my day. This time, a TTY, T, a TTY wouldn't come up. And it pissed me off because I just spent like an hour going through and, you know, installing DWM, getting my rice up, you know, to date and getting all my scripts installed and all this stuff. So, after that is where the true problem started coming with Arctic things. Because, like I said, the light DM stuff, not an Arctic problem. You know, I, like, I didn't even have a chance to go through and experience anything with... At that point, I was using the run it, uh, ISO. And, you know, I didn't have any sh opportunity to actually play around with that because I was just messing around getting it set up so I could actually use it. Uh, but once that crapped out, I decided, well, you know, I'll reinstall it. This time, I'm going to go through and do the purist's way of in installing, you know, Arctic or basically Arch. And I got it to a certain point, and then it just crapped out. I, I, it was running something, and it went to a blank screen. There was nothing. So I was like, 
all right, obviously I did something wrong. You know, I'm stupid. I'm a noob. All that stuff. It happens, you know, a lot. So I was like, screw this. I'll try again. It happened a second time. So I was like, you know, what? well, I know the graphical installer version works because I've already done it once. So I downloaded the XFC. Well, no, I didn't download the XFC version because I knew that one would have LightDM in it, and I knew LightDM would always screw me over. So I downloaded the Plasma version, and then <laughs> it wouldn't even load into the live environment. It gave me a blank screen with the cursor. Like the cursor was there, uh, and that was it. And uh, I could get into a TTY sometimes, and sometimes I couldn't. Uh, why this was happening? I don't know. It was really weird. So I went and tried a different ISO. Same thing happened. And another ISO. The same thing happened. So I was like, you know what? Maybe this is my computer. Or maybe it's the USB stick that I was doing. So I tried a different USB stick. Same thing happened. Uh, so I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to do this on a different computer. I went to the standing desk. And I installed, tried to install it on that laptop. Same thing happened. So I was like, you know what, this is dumb. I'm going to go back to a virtual machine. And uh, the virtual machine was still working fine. But I don't want to use it in a virtual machine. I want to use this on hardware because I want to actually review it. I don't think you can truly review something that's in a virtual machine. It just doesn't work for me. I want to be able to install a game or Steam on it if I want to. Uh, I want to do all the stuff I'd normally do. And I can't really feel like I do that. I don't feel like I really do that in a, a virtual machine. Long story short, is that I have not installed Arctic Slanks again, and uh, I tried it again three times last night, and I'm just done. I'm like I, I'm I'm done with this now. I don't think that I can blame Arctic Slanks for this problem. I think that this has something to do with my weird combination of hardware. It's possible that the cheap Chinese memory that I have just you know is horrible and all that stuff i mean i know that there's several people out there who know i have this off-brand memory and always blame all my linux problems on those but it works with arch it works with ubuntu it works with open suse like like after i got done last night i decided you know, i'm just gonna install the i'm just gonna do the second place winner and install open suse it was fine uh, open suse is up and running now today i had problems with it gra not grabbing uh, the webcam or the screen, and I recorded an awesome window manager like time lapse race, and uh, got back to where I was going to edit the video and realized that it didn't actually record the video. So that was a whole other thing that just pissed me off. But I don't think that had anything to do with OpenSUSE. I think that had to do with awesome window manager and not having a dependency installed. So yeah, my last two weeks in Linux have not been all that great, and I'm just like I said, I'm just. I, I had to, for my mental health, step away from Rx Linux because I've tried so many times to install this thing over and over again, whether it's with different ISOs, different USB sticks on different a different computer, and it just doesn't like me. I don't know whether or not I'm doing something wrong, whether or not my internet is corrupting it somewhere along the line. Where So the, the thing, you know, the one thing I didn't try was actually doing the ISO onto a USB key with something other than DD, because I've always been, just, I just used DD in order to do that. Maybe if I downloaded Etcher and tried that, that would work, but I don't know. The bottom line is, Artix isn't going to happen. So those of you who voted for Artix, I apologize. Uh, I don't think you would have enjoyed my review of it anyways, because I would have spent a good portion of it bitching about the software availability, because the way they do the repos of having their own repos is just dumb the fact that they have very little software in there or the, the like i can understand having your own repos and not having like the aur enabled by default a lot of distributions have that like manjaro doesn't have the aur enabled by default that's fine uh, it's for security reasons and i understand that and it's you know easy to you know enable that thing same thing with like 32-bit libraries and stuff like that the multi-lib stuff a lot of a lot of distributions, I think, including mainline Arch, doesn't have that enabled by default. Perfectly fine. Uh, I expect to change that stuff, but the fact that they t took all the Arch repos, like all of them, away and had their own, it just didn't make sense to me. Because this is Arch Linux. That's all it is. It's Arch Linux. They all they've done to Arch Linux is take out the system D and put in their own little init system. 
I don't understand why they had. I don't understand their purpose behind making their own repos. It didn't make sense to me. Maybe the arch guys didn't like them using the repos. I don't know. It was it's it was a weird situation for that little bit of time I used it. So, uh, like I said, I apologize that the the review is just not going to cut. Maybe after I've uh, had enough to, you know distance away from this uh, scenario, the situation, maybe I'll try it again. Maybe I'll get lucky and it'll actually install. Maybe I'll go through and try the XFC one again because I know that one did install. And then I will just pull Light DM out of it, you know, before I do an update and a, and a reboot and uh, install SDDM or just use our, you know, start X or something. So uh, that is it for me on this one. I'm going to be, I have an OpenSUSE installed on this computer now. I'm going to be using that for the next few weeks. And I will make a few videos on it because I want to do a couple ricing videos on it. And I want to do some stuff on Zipper. And I'd love to do something on Yast because there's not enough Yast in the world. Because Yast is kind of amazing. And it doesn't get enough credit for being, you know, kind of cool. So anyways, that is it for me this time. You can follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2 is fun too. Patrick L, Marcus, Meglin, Sven, Jackson, Evan Tool, Joshua Lee, Steve A, Mitchell, Art Center, Merrick, Camp, J Dog, and the BSDs Rock. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time. <laughs>